In the six years to 2014, declared donations from the poker machine industry to the Liberal and Labor parties amounted to more than $6 million. There may be many more that we don't know about. Tonight, 7.30 reveals claims by the former Labor Minister Peter Garrett of a possible bribery attempt involving thousands of dollars. The revelations were set to be included in a book and the new documentary about the poker machine industry in Australia. But in an extraordinary twist, the former minister now says his memory was faulty. James Thomas reports. Well, I haven't seen anything like this before. So this is a, this is a new level of misbehaviour. Claims of misconduct by a multi-billion dollar industry. When you put this in context, um, I have no doubt that this was a bribe. The most likely offence is an attempt to, or in fact, to have bribed, or attempted to have bribed, a Commonwealth public official. Know, the Commonwealth official in question, Peter Garrett. A, a, uh, an the fixes do the fixing, the locals do the lynching, the people deny, they deny. Peter Garrett leapt from the stage into politics in 2004. A decade later and out of politics, he has made a detailed allegation about the poker machine industry in an interview with the documentary film crew obtained by the ABC. The quality of the vision is poor, but the claims are explosive. Uh, soon after I was elected uh, to the seat of Kingston Smith, um, I attended an event which was put on to um, welcome me and, and, and others uh, by the clubs and uh, the Hotels Association people. A representative came to me and, and handed almost straight away over a, a, uh, an envelope, which I took thinking it might have been material or information or something of that sort, and of course looked at it and, and, and realised that it actually had money in it. Uh, how much? I'm not entirely sure. I didn't count it. But uh, it was hundreds, if not thousands, of dollars. The former minister says the event was hosted by Clubs New South Wales and the Australian Hotels Association. But it was very much, uh, look, this is normal course of business, you know, this is what we do, and now you're here, here's some money to help you, and, uh, you know, I'm sure we're going to be friends. But I gave it back. There is very seriously um, the likelihood of offences having been committed against the criminal code. Thanks for this, Rob. That's all right. Cheers. Robert Wilde is the co-chair of the Anti-Corruption Committee of the International Bar Association. He is a globally recognised legal expert in anti-corruption and bribery. And if somebody gives a newly appointed politician a envelope with a large amount of cash in it, that strikes you immediately as highly suspicious and um, possibly an attempt to bribe. Why is this potentially a bribe as opposed to a legitimate political donation? The fact is most people, I suspect, do not pay to influence politicians by a legitimate donation with cash in an envelope or a brown paper bag. Uh, look, this was just a blatant attempt to buy favour with a politician. No one hands over literally bags of cash these days unless they're up to something. And it shocks me coming from such a, a credible witness. I mean, there can be no doubt uh, what former Minister Garrett is saying. He wouldn't be making this up. 7.30 sought to clarify Peter Garrett's story, but in a surprising about-face, the former minister's recollection has now completely changed. The former minister now says the envelope wasn't full of cash, but rather contained a cheque addressed to his electoral council. He also says that the event took place before he was elected, not after. Now these are significant changes. A cheque is less likely to be used for a potential bribe. And if Mr Garrett had not yet been elected, the offence of attempting to bribe a public official would no longer apply. Why he would now abandon that story and talk about there just being a cheque in an envelope, um, it beggars belief. Um, I mean, I can only speculate, um, perhaps, uh, he's concerned that uh, he might be sued. Uh, perhaps he's been heavied by members of the Labor Party or even by uh, someone or some organisation in the poker machine industry. Um, perhaps uh, he's worried that 
um, he could be investigated for not having reported it in the first case. You tested us all, then, didn't you? Peter Garrett denies any motivation to change his story, other than his memory completely failed him. However, in the interview obtained by 7.30, he repeats the claim multiple times in great detail. And handed me an envelope, uh, which I took, and I thought, oh, it's, you know, maybe a card or some material, but it turned out to be money. I think it might be some literature or something like that, and after that I looked down and realised that it was full of money. But then, on examination, oh, hang on a minute, it, it's, it's got money in it. It was money. It was filled with money. In a statement, Peter Garrett says he asked for his original claims in the documentary and in his upcoming book to be corrected. Clubs New South Wales deny giving Peter Garrett or any politician an envelope full of cash. But a senior academic at Monash University says the story sounds familiar. I've been told by staffers and by politicians themselves that these sorts of payments are quite regularly received. Dr Charles Livingston has researched the public health impacts of gambling addiction for 20 years. He claims first-hand accounts of two politicians at the federal level, an independent and a liberal, and four from New South Wales, an independent and three from Labor, that have been offered substantial amounts of unreceipted cash. Can you name names? No, I can't do that. Senator Nick Xenophon agrees few would willingly speak out against the might of the poker machine industry. I was told by two senior members of the Labor and Liberal parties respectively that as much as they hated poker machines, they would never stand up against the poker machine lobby uh, because it would be political suicide. They routinely bully. Um, they will routinely go to any lengths to get their way, and they normally do. In Andrew Wilkie's eyes, Mr Garrett's differing recollections have only raised more questions. Well, it it would be very helpful, obviously, if Peter Garrett could explain this turn of events um, and not an explanation like he got it wrong, because that's not credible. And then uh, if we end up back at where, where this all started, that someone in the poker machine industry offered him what a reasonable person would uh, see as a bribe, then there needs to be an investigation by an appropriate authority. <laughs> James Thomas reporting.